Good morning, about six in the morning right now, heading down to Miami. First stop is gonna be at Hollywood, Florida, at one of the most iconic restaurants in South Florida for what may be the best burger in the US. Or well, at least according to Forbes, like 13 years ago. And then I found an all-you-can-eat Filipino buffet at an Asian grocery store for 12 bucks. Yeah, I might be more excited about that one. And before hitting off, a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Athletic Greens. This has been an essential part of my daily routine for a couple years now. And it's so simple. Every single day, I put a scoop, or if I'm on a road, a travel pack inside this travel bottle. 8 to 12 ounces of water, shake, and drink. And that's it. No more counting vitamin pills, no more dragging around bottles of vitamins wherever you go. When I used to do that, it was inconvenient, it was extremely expensive. Then there's the research where I try to figure out which vitamins I need. And now every single day, a pack or a scoop of AG1, I get 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, which I desperately need. Whole foods sourced superfoods. It's just such a convenient and hassle-free way for me to stay healthy. When I'm not filming, there's usually a large gap between the dinner from the night before and when I eat the next day. So I take this in the morning, it gives me energy for my morning workout or my morning run, or in today's case, my long drive. And when you get your box inside, you'll find a travel bottle, a big pouch of AG1, a free year supply of vitamin D and travel packs. And what's great is that AG1 always follows the latest research. They go beyond third party testing to make sure whatever they're giving you, you're getting the highest quality and the best nutritional daily habits on the planet. So if you wanna give it a try, go to my link down below. You'll get a year supply of vitamin D, which is something that most of us don't get enough, and five free travel packs with your water. And it really is a game changer when it comes to supporting your immune system because AG1 really does provide your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every single day. All right, let's go see if this burger is really as good as they say it is. I love burgers, and apparently one of the best burgers in the country, according to GQ Magazine, Oprah, a bunch of other people, is right here at a place that used to be a gas station. The Tub is a bustling place. Got here around 2 p.m., which is not peak lunchtime or dinner time. Still have to wait to get a seat. And they are most known for their burgers, which comes in a 13 ounce patty. So about a pound of patty in these burgers. And just in case that wasn't enough, they're also known for their chili and key lime pie as well. And like I said, this place was converted from an old gas station. It was an old Sonical station. And this place definitely fits all the definitions of a dive. You would usually miss this place driving down the road, but it's situated right on the water. Got a beautiful view out back. And it just looks like a place that would serve a really good burger. But I'll try and let you know how it is. This is the giant burger. It is a tall, thick, juicy patty. It is just oozing, oozing juice right now. It's a very simple, classic looking burger. Giant, thick patty covered in cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, all sitting on top of a Kaiser roll. Just picking this thing up, this is definitely the heftiest patty. I've ever seen on it. Well, I mean, I did eat a burger once that was seven, eight, seven and a half pounds, but besides that, this is the heftiest patty I ever picked up. Now I'm just gonna cut into this without the lettuce and tomatoes. Whoa! That looks like one perfectly cooked burger. And giving it a little squeeze, oh my gosh. That is ridiculous. The thing with thick patties is, it's really hard to cook it well on a grill, but this thing, it's just all glistening and give it a little squeeze. This is like a meat juice geyser. Woo. All right, let's get into this. I'm a big fan of this. It's a very no frill, not overly elegant, not overly sophisticated. Just a very good, very beefy, very fatty, classic burger. That's actually the size of a baby cow. I love when you bite into it. You have to bite and slurp at the same time. That's how much juice that's in here. I love the perfect char that's on these patties. I especially love that huge beefy flavor. Simple bun, cheese, onions, lettuce, tomatoes. I'm trying to add the tomatoes back in here. Yeah, it is much better with the onions and tomatoes added. The tomatoes, sweet, 
just as juicy as the burger. Onions give off a nice crunch. This is my type of burger. I mean, I do like a fancy burger every now and then, but what I like is just a really juicy beefy patty that's done perfectly. I don't know the lean meats of fat ratio of this burger. All I know is when I bit into it, that burger juice up low. And you can get a side of fries with a burger and there are these giant steak fries. This is really good as well. I think overall, love the patty. Love the simplicity of it. Love the execution. Some people like thinner, more crispier patties, but I like it thick and juicy. And like I said, biting into this, it's like a beefy waterfall. I don't know if this is the best burger I've ever had, but in terms of a, just a classic, well-executed, delicious burger, I'd say it's one of the top ones. Especially that nice, lingering, fatty flavor that's still sitting on my tongue after the burger's already gone down the hatch. That's a nice feeling. So distracted by the burger, I forgot I got the chili. So they said this is their original, famous house chili. I personally like chilies that are not as beany as they are meaty. There's definitely a ton of meat in here. Ton of meat, ton of spice. Forget the crackers. Take a steak fry, dunk that in the chili. That's a great combo. Overall, I'm a fan. Love the burger, love the chili. And after all that, dessert. Coming to South Florida, gotta have a key lime pie. Hard and sweet, nice cookie combo on the bottom. This thing also cuts through the fat that's still lingering on my tongue from the burger. Great palate cleanser of a dessert. No one in this place, lying out the door. Stop number two. After a thick, juicy, extremely satisfying burger, only thing I can think about eating, all you can eat Filipino buffet. All the classics, the favorites sitting here. That's always so exciting. So this place is inside an Asian grocery store and there's a buffet situated at the back. And when I came here, they're about to close about an hour or so. They told me there was a lot more food than this on the buffet. But again, like I said, all the classics are here. There's seasick, there's longamisa, I see milkfish, adobo, there's sinagong, all the classic hits. Sinagong, one of my favorite soups. So savory, so sour. And this one is made with pork. This is so good. It's just like it just came from a Filipino grandma's kitchen, which it pretty much did. Pork synagogue is something I haven't had a lot of before, but this is so awesome. That deliciously sour flavor from the tamarind perfectly balances out the fattiness of the pork. Each piece is tender. There's a good amount of fat in here as well as lean meat, a little crunch from the vegetables. I always like to start off with a bowl of this. I feel like it's fulfilling, but it also kind of opens up your appetite for more food. Got some of everything, some eggplant. Mm, fresh eggplant, I think there's, there's some shrimp paste in here. The eggplant is juicy, it's a little sweet. Mm, very shrimpy. This is taro leaves cooked in coconut milk mm, with a chili pepper. That is so, so nice. Creamy, subtly sweet coconut milk. The taro leaves come out very spinachy. It's so coconutty. Whenever I eat Filipino food, I just feel so comforted. This is like the stuff that my stomach craves like all the time. Dishes that are very well seasoned, ton of flavor, ton of meat. This is the seasick. Mm, that's so good. I taste the pieces of pork. I taste the innards, which is such an integral part, at least for me, integral part of a seasick dish. Mm, and also a ton of fat. I think I taste some ear in there as well, a little gelatinousy parts of the pig. That's what makes seasick uniquely delicious. You don't see a lot of Filipino buffets. I, I think I've only been to one in Houston, Texas. When I see one is available, I gotta have it. Filipino buffets often, they're very affordable. This, all you can eat, $12. Trust me, it's worth it. They have this dish, it's just a mix of stir-fried chicken liver. And I think there's, there's some gizzards in here as well. I love liver, I love gizzards. And of course, another favorite of mine, adobo. If adobo is done well, mm, like it is here. One of my favorite things on this planet. It's very similar to a Chinese dish called hong shao rou, which pretty much braised pork belly. There's tons of fat, so much flavor stewed into those pieces of pork. And also the signature Filipino vinegariness 
that's added in there balances everything out. It adds that, again, unique Filipino food flair. Honestly, what I really like to do, get a bunch of everything, stir it together, over some rice, shove it in my mouth. This way, you get a little bit of everything. Mm, I love coming to Miami. So much good food to be found here. Dino Guam, another one of my favorite dishes. This is uh, beef stewed in blood. One of the most flavorful dishes in all Filipino cuisine. Mm, so rich and savory and vinegary. Love to mix a lot of rice with this dish. This is one of the most perfect dishes you can eat with rice. It's so saucy. The cuts of meat they put in here, tons of fat, good amount of vinegar. Oh, this is so good. This is out of this world. Little thin pieces of fried fish. This is the ultimate little fish chip. Oh, this is perfect with any of the stew dishes because it adds that extra crunch. Mm, traditional Langanisa. Savory and sweet and smoky. And of course, the chan kuali. Crunchy, good amount of fat. It'll be so much better straight out of the oven, but still has a nice crunch, good flavor. It's so hard for me when I go to Filipino restaurants because I love all the classics. I want some of each. That's why I love Filipino buffets. And seriously, where are you gonna find all you can eat buffet for $12? That's just the most authentic home cooking food you can find. I mean, I think an extra value meal at McDonald's costs what, like 15 bucks now maybe? I wish I came here when they just put everything out when everything is super fresh. And like I said, they told me there were many more items than what's left. This is a really fun place to have a buffet. And afterwards, you can buy some Filipino snacks, take it home. I didn't know this place existed. I've been to Miami many times, never knew this place existed. Such a cool little hidden gem that I will highly, highly, highly recommend. Dinner number one is at the Miami Design Dish. This is a very, very trendy area. I'm here to try a restaurant called Itame, a chef friend of mine from New York. Highly recommended coming here and getting the ceviche. He says it's his favorite dish in the world, so had to come here and try that. And this is a very traditional version of this dish with locally caught black grouper. Two types of corn, one soft and sweet, one more crunchy. Onions, sweet potato from Murasaki, Japan, because this is a, a Peruvian slash Japanese fusion place. Also, some chilies on here. This is magical. The citrus cooked the outside of the grouper, making it slightly firm, but when you bite inside, it's just pure tenderness. This dish is extremely citrusy, so you kind of want to eat this with some of the corn and the sweet potatoes to kind of cut down a bit of the acid, which could be a little too much if you're not used to that. Mm. I mean, there's so much different textures in here from the crunchy onions to the corn to the mushy potatoes and all that just complementing that deliciously flaky pieces of grouper. And I love dishes that are extremely sour and this dish definitely brings a lot of that. Of course, I'm not an expert ceviche, I don't eat this a lot. I just know what's yummy, what's delicious and this is definitely that. This is a spiny lobster grill and with the innards and they made it into a miso that covers the lobster on the top. Underneath there's some kind of, a, of seaweed aioli. Oh my gosh. This is one of the most insanely delicious lobster I've ever had. First of all, the lobster is so fresh and sweet. Dip the meat into the miso and there's some kind of oil on here that has a very earthy flavor. And the miso just adds so much depth, so much umami. And the seaweed on the bottom, creamy, a little smoky, a little briny. Mm. The lobster is very citrusy as well. You taste the fire, you taste the smoke, the char. Oh, this is just perfection. Dessert, this looks awesome. Ice cream with olive oil drizzled on top, cherry cremolata, Japanese white chocolate on the bottom, and whipped cream drizzled with olive oil. Mm. Wow. This and the lobster, some of the best things I ever put in my mouth. It's icy, it's creamy, it's citrusy. Add some of the meringue strips on top. Mmm, so crunchy and airy and incredibly fun to eat. This is absolutely masterful. The cherry ice brings a deliciously tart flavor, which is balanced so nicely by the cream. A little white chocolate on the bottom to add to the milkiness. And the marine strips just adds a fun, crunchy texture. This place is so good. And the menu changes every single day, but if you ever run into that lobster or this, 
you gotta get him. 10 out of 10. So originally we wanted to stop by this new pizza place in Miami called Slice. I heard really good things about it, especially the pepperoni spicy honey pizza. A window tonight, lying down the block, stood there for about 30 minutes, didn't move a single inch. I figured by the time I get to the front, it's gonna be closed already. So that was supposed to be my dessert, but now I'm here. This place specializes in tres leches and all sorts of flavors. Cookie butter is what they won a bunch of awards for. Mm. Oh, that is so milky and buttery. Mm. Also, I got, actually I got two flavors. Ferrero Rocher. Wow. I think I might like this better. I love Ferrero Rocher. That made into a tres leche. This is making missing out on that slice of pizza. Much more bearable. I love coming to Miami. There's always things I haven't tried. So much different types of food here. Every time I'm here, never a bad food experience. Of course, all the places I went to list down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.